we are talking about the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run to Flyknit. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, euro, euro, peso. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about a first impressions review of the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit. So for the context, I'm just going to call it Invincible 2 just because it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's going to go straight into it in terms of what I think of a first impressions. I've taken it for a spin this morning as they arrived yesterday. Give you the most obvious question. Do I need to upgrade from version 1 to version 2 and are these any different? So with that aside, let's get stuck into it. So first things first, in terms of some technical data about the shoe, it is a nine millimeter offset, very much the same as version one. It comes in at true to size, so I've stuck with the same size that I had with version one in version two. So if you are thinking if it's changed, it has not, so stick with the same size. It is a road shoe and you can wear it on some light trails, very sort of not too technical and you can wear it in the wet weather, the cold weather, the dry weather and the hot weather. <laughs> That's about right. So it's very versatile across any sort of type of run and me personally having known the first version really really well I feel as if I'm in a good position to make a really good judgment call about how this shoe will fit going forward and if it is actually an upgrade on the version one and if you should go out and buy it so it comes in at 165 pounds which has gone up in price from Nike's perspective not too sure why but that is the cost of it here in the UK and all importantly between version one and version two the weight of the shoe so this comes in at 193 grams average and my version one which I took as an average weight came in at 281 so your guess is as good as mine as to where the extra 10 grams or so has come from version one to version two they have changed the upper and the upper only so there are some different cosmetic changes to this shoe comparing from version one to version two the midsole and the outsole have remained completely the same they measure the same i took a caliper to the measurements measured the width the, the length everything in terms of the specs of the shoe and it remains exactly the same so there's no change fundamentally on the volume and the envelope of this particular shoe that has remained completely the same so if you loved version one in terms of how you was able to run in it how soft and bouncy and responsive it was you're going to love version two so that is the first thumbs up for this particular review that it is exactly the same ride the same level of snappiness very 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 comfortable shoe plenty of snappy responsiveness and it's got their highest level of foam and their most premium foam so let's move into the changes of this shoe so pretty much the changes of the shoe are all upper in terms of what you see so they're starting at the back of the shoe heel counter and the clip so this pink and green clip has now been remodeled it's basically just been reshaped just added a little bit of height compared to version one so you can see that it's slightly slightly different in terms of it kind of has a bit more of a wrap around around the back of the heel that's just to create a little bit of extra stability from a lateral point of view just in case you felt like it was sort of maybe a little bit too loose or you found like it was a little bit not as secure as you like that's just going to give you an extra bit of height and a bit of room other than that, it's pretty much the same. The counter is the same. The back of the shoe is the same. The back of the padding is still the same and you still got that great, great lockdown. So no issues taking these fresh out of the box this morning and straight on a run, no issues whatsoever. You tie the laces, cinch them down and you're good to go. So that's a huge positive. Number two, the back of the shoe just got some slight cosmetic changes and it now says Zoom X there. And it's also written on the actual midsole itself. So moving on to the actual tongue and sort of the lacing, They've changed the tongue so it now is a little bit more wider in terms of the width of the tongue the only thing with that that i found when i laced up was it kind of sat at a slight slant when i laced it up so you got to make sure it's really really wrapped onto the top of your foot and making sure that it kind of contacts both sort of side walls of the shoe itself moving forward they've changed the lacing structure on this particular shoe again from version one to version two there's now a slightly different orientation i mean it's exactly exactly the same in terms of how they lace down and just some of the detailing around it cosmetically because of the fly knit change and they've actually changed the laces on this particular shoe so negative number one 
the laces are the same length so i found it pretty difficult to do a runner's knot uh, same again on this one they are exactly the same in terms of the length which kind of sucks so a little bit more sort of uh, they've got a little bit of cushion in them so one of the issues that i had with the first version was the fact that once i laced up it kind of did cinch the foot down too much and i did have a few top of the foot tendon issues that it kind of cut out some of the circulation i had a little issue but whereas this hopefully with the tongue being semi-gusseted and again with the laces the slight change in the laces hopefully that doesn't happen i didn't have no issues this morning and just an, from an ocd perspective do make sure your laces slit nice and flat and not turned and curvy slight changes are in the upper so nike have said that the three flyknit components were placed in different areas of the shoe so you've got the tongue you've got the seamless wrap around where the heel and then you've got the nice containment at the front for the front of your foot which keeps you nice and stable difference in the top and the aesthetical difference is and you've obviously got the same swoosh there onto the middle of the shoe the difference is coming into the top of the actual toe box and i feel that the material is just a little bit more tighter. It's just got a little bit more of a wiry feel to it. It's got a bit more structure. Whether or not it remains to be seen if these remain the same, but they did feel a little bit different in terms of it's just a little bit more compact on through the top of the foot. It means you're gonna get a better foot placement into the bottom of the shoe. It's not gonna move around as much. It's gonna keep you pretty secure and comfortable. As a negative, it's going to mean that there's not a lot of room for your feet to move up and down. You can sort of splay them out as much, but again, it felt pretty identical. I'm just literally just trying to kind of make some real pointers as to what is completely different. On there, you've got the reflective strips. I remember some people had some issues with this. I had an issue once. I never quite went to the length of butchering the shoe and taking it out because I didn't think that was necessary. But again, no issues in terms of rubbing at the front or even on the side walls of the shoe. And again, you do have that really good lockdown. Never had the need to readjust on the run, which is great. Moving into the midsole and outsole, Again, as I said, it's the same Zoom X bounce. So you've got the same responsive and lightweight, giving you bounce with every single step. It's shaped like a rocker, again, like version one. And obviously the foam supports the three phases of a runner's stance. So it offers flexibility when it rises off the ground, a smooth ride when it's in the air and moving forwards. And obviously that cushioning at ground contact, which is what you want as a three stages of a runner's stride. So the positive is that if you love the first version, you're going to love the second version. And that is what I can pretty much say in terms of it's not any worse than the first version. It's also not massively greater than the first version. It is on par of the first version. So it kind of does bring me into a sort of a summary. But on the run today, it felt exactly like version wearing a version one shoe. I couldn't tell you if I was wearing one or two. It was just the fact that they were so bright. They were so different. I've gone away from having four black pairs and I've now got a colored one, which is pretty nice. The million dollar question as to probably why you're watching this video, do I need to upgrade from version one to version two? And the answer is only if you want to, only if you've got a couple of caveats. Number one, if you're able to get version one on a discount, do that. Number two, if you're able to stockpile a couple of them in your size, do that. The reason why you'll get number two is the fact that you want to have the latest shoe because it looks slightly different or because you cannot get hold of version one anymore without up having to get version two. Either way, if you end up with a Invincible, whether it's one or two, you're not going to be disappointed. So I think, again, it comes down to what it is that you want. If you want to have the latest and greatest, the ones with the shiny colors and all the ones that are coming out in the future go to version two, but it doesn't give you a performance upgrade. It doesn't give you a functionality upgrade. It just gives you the same level of performance and feeling from the first versions. My recommendation to you, if you've got a pair at home which are 50 miles old, stick with them. If you've got a pair which are coming to the end of their life and you cannot get hold of version one anymore in your size or a particular colorway that you like, have a look at version two if you can explore that version. Obviously get it on a discount potentially, that is probably going to be the best option. If you can get version one, there's no need for you to rush out placing orders and going out for version two. So that's my honest, honest opinion. And I want to be completely transparent with you here on YouTube. It is an on par upgrade. It's very, very minor. Hope you enjoyed this first impressions review on the channel. Channel. I hope your running is going really well. Hopefully see you very, very soon in the next video. Remember to give it a like and to subscribe down to the channel. Help push it out to as many people and share with as many people as possible. So hopefully catch you in the next video. Cheers.